Welcome back again. This time what we're going to talk about is a different base, so not decimal, not binary. Uh, we're going to talk about hexadecimal. Uh, hexadecimal is a long word, so sometimes you'll just hear people say hex. Uh, they mean the same thing, so they'll say represent it in hex or represent it in hexadecimal. I'll say both, doesn't really matter. Uh, hexadecimal is base 16, uh, so whenever you write a number um, instead of like a base 10 system, uh, same drill except for it's a base 16 uh, to figure out what it is. The symbols that are used in hexadecimals um, are ones you know, you know, 0 through 9, those you're, you're pretty familiar with. Uh, just like before, the symbol, you know, for 4, it represents a quantity of 4. Uh, the new ones um, are letters. Uh, so A, um, don't think of it as A, think of it as a symbol that represents uh, that many, so it represents 10. Um, and F, uh, you know, don't think of it as the letter F. Think of it as a symbol that represents uh, this many, which of course is 15, the number you know. So really they're not any different than the earlier ones, right? It's just a symbol, I mean something drawn on parchment um, in some crazy shape that represents a quantity. Uh, so it's not any different. Um, they look like letters that you know, and we'll refer to them by their letter name, of course, because that's their name. Um, but they're symbols that represent quantities in this context. Other than that, it works just the same as before. You've got uh, locations, and these locations determine the multiplying factor. Uh, so the thing at the bottom is 16, which is the base to the zero, uh, and then the first, and then the second, and then the third. Uh, obviously, there's kind of another step uh, when you do this math to convert um, the letter symbol um, into something you're more familiar with. Um, so E is 14, B here is 11. So this number right here, uh, note the prefix by the way, 0x. That's how our compiler will let you write something in hexadecimal. Um, <clears throat> is just uh, 0 plus 3 times, um, I mean we could do this, right? So 3 times 256. Uh, 14 times 16, I think I did this earlier, I think it's 224, 11, um, no, this is 768 plus 324 plus 11. Um, I assume I did all those things right, and you can see that this number, um, 3EB in hex, is really just 1,003. So it's a different base, it's something new. Um, it is useful because it's... Um, kind of a shorthand way of representing binary, which we'll get to later. Um, so this is the third and final base that we care about um, for computers. Whenever you're dealing with uh, hex and base, or hex and binary a lot, uh, sometimes this table is just worth memorizing, right? Um, in particular, these values towards the bottom are the ones that you uh, may, may choose to just memorize. Um, I know I've been doing this long enough that, I mean, if you showed me, like, you know, the binary 3, I would just see it as 3 uh, right away. I mean, same with, like, you know, the lower ones. I mean, you know, binary 5, binary 8. I mean, they just look like 8 to me. Um, and if you get uh, good with these letters at the bottom, uh, then you can kind of convert back and forth. To be honest, I really just remember that A is 10 and F is 15. Um, and of course, if I know A, then I know B because it's only one more. And if I know F, I know E is 14. And then C and D aren't that far away. Um, so it's fairly easy to just memorize that thing. Um, if not, you can always look it up. Uh, there are tools you can use for conversions. Uh, counting in hex, uh, very simple, uh, especially the first part. Uh, so if you're counting in hex, through the first, uh, you know, nine, uh, you can see that the hex and the decimal are exactly the same, right? They look identical, uh, whereas binary is already doing crazy things. Uh, and then you have this area here um, where decimal needs two characters to represent uh, 10 through 15, but hex can do it in just one, so it's a much more compact mechanism. Um, I obviously wish I could go back to like the beginning of time and use hex as like our default system. It would have made computers so much easier. Um, but I mean, this is why we use decimal, right? I mean, you were given 10 fingers and 10 toes. Uh, it's not surprising that we use a decimal system. But if we could have used hex, um, I would have preferred it. And it would have made computers just be much more elegant. So if you ever are a time traveler, convert us to hex. All right, probably not. Not going to happen since it didn't happen. 
Uh, after that, you uh, just begin to introduce a new uh, character. So you've got one zero for 16, um, and that continues uh, down the line. So pretty simple to count uh, in hex. Suppose we ought to get some practice. Uh, so see if you can uh, take a little bit and tell me what 0x042 is. I kind of like the 42 joke. Take a minute. Alright, so I'll go ahead and work it as well. Alright, so I eventually got through it after a couple math errors. Um, so, you know, 16 to the third power, the first power, the zeroth power. Uh, just copy your number over 0, 4, D, and 2. Uh, D is just 13. Um, and then you just, you know, multiply uh, these as you come across. And you get 0, um, 1,024. Um, 208, which is the one I messed up the first time, um, and 2, uh, add them all up, and you get 1, 2, 3, 4. So I tried to make it something that looked good when you finished. Um, and so that's a conversion from hex into decimal. Uh, let's see if you can do the reverse conversion. Uh, so try to take the number 175 and convert it into hexadecimal. I'll go ahead and do it as well. All right, so we picked kind of a tricky one for you. Um, so you have to see first time, how many times will 16 go into this number? Uh, 16 will go into it 10 times. Um, 10 times um, is the symbol A. Um, and then after that, you have how many left over after you put uh, those in, you have 15 left over. Um, 15 is the symbol F. Um, so the answer to this question um, in hex is 0xAF. Uh, so that's the uh, representation of 175 uh, using hexadecimal symbols. We've actually got a few more conversions to do now. We did, you know, hex to des, des to hex. Um, but we also know binary. So we've got to be able to convert from binary to hex and from hex to binary. Turns out this is super easy, and this is why people care about hex at all. It's because it's really easy to go from hex to binary, and it's much shorter to write. Um, you've probably noticed that binary is quite, uh, quite verbose. Um, but it turns out that if you think of binary in like chunks of four, um, which you know is a fairly natural chunk, you could write it in hex. Um, almost directly. So this is um, a 2, a 9, a D, and a 0. Um, so this number, whatever it is in binary, you know, I mean it's obviously some number, is this number in hex. So I just converted from binary into hex um, and it was quite easy. My D's and my zeros are hard to see the difference in. Uh, the way you do it is you just break it into kind of chunks of 4 um, you know, you just kind of draw it spaced out a little bit. And then four binaries um, converts exactly to one hex, right? So if you were to say, to write a number with this many binary bits, um, a hex number with this many characters is the exact same number of bits. Um, and you just can use one of these charts uh, to do the conversions to help you out. Uh, hopefully I got them all. Uh, going in reverse is just as easy. Uh, so that was hex to binary, uh, binary to hex. Um, you just kind of do the reverse. Again, you look at the chart um, and you just write things on here, right? Uh, so if I wrote a 3 and then a B uh, and then a 1 and then a 0, um, there you go. I just converted uh, from binary uh, into hex. Or sorry, from hex into binary. Um, but you can see that the conversion is trivial. One of my little pet peeves, just to mention it, is <clears throat> sometimes people put on too many numbers. Um, it doesn't happen in this direction, but it happens in this direction, in the, uh, the previous example all the time. They'll write this number, whatever it was, with like a whole bunch of leading zeros. Um, and it drives me crazy, right? Because it's like if you were to write this number um, with like this many zeros, and then whatever it was, it was like a 2, 9, D, 0. Um, a hex number with this many characters would be a lot of binary bits. Um, it's still right. I mean, leading zeros are leading zeros. You throw them out. Um, but a pet peeve of mine is to add a bunch of leading zeros um, when they're not really needed uh, in hex. Uh, the reason hex exists is because firmware programmers love hex. 
Uh, there's a lot of the times when you're programming where the bits are independent, like uh, for example, the port C LEDs, they're all separate, they're individual bits. And so you want to express that in either binary or hex, because it kind of shows how the bits are independent. Um, and people tend to prefer hex, um, just because it's actually easier to read and easier to look at with your eyes, once you're good at these conversions, um, than it is to like count how many zeros there are in a binary number. Eight bits isn't too bad in binary, but 16 is just, eh. And obviously, the exact same thing as, as these two would be to write 131. These three things are the exact same, by the way. It doesn't matter um, to you as a human which one you prefer. Uh, the computer sees them as the same. They will all convert uh, this C code when it's converted to machine code. They will get the exact same conversion. So which one you use here is simply for your benefit, um, and the computer doesn't care at all. All right, so that's hexadecimal. Uh, hopefully you'll learn to like it. Uh, I do. It's a great way to represent things. See you next time.